I'm pleased to tell you that summer is here, at least in Greece. So, ah, ah, so unfair, so unfair. <laughs> we're all that lucky. Okay. Well, I think that we are streaming live. So, um, well, thank you for Renata for um, putting this burden on me. I, I shall carry it uh, gracefully, I hope. Uh, welcome to those of you on YouTube who are joining us for the second live streamed uh, meeting of the Coordinating Collective of DiEM25. We are very proud of um, the transparency that we practice. Um, it, it, it's important for our members and also for people who are just curious to find out what is it that the Coordinating Collective of um, DiEM25, the central organizing um, elected body, um, does and how we sift through the various um, issues that appear and also, much more importantly, I think for people out there, outside the organization, the bureaucracy of DiEM25, uh, what, are, what is our take on the events that will go down in history as pivotal over the next uh, decade or maybe more? Uh, th this lockdown is uh, going to be remembered for a very, very long time. And it will be remembered because for a, not only have we had um, an ongoing crisis in Europe over the last 10 years, which gave rise to the creation of DiEM25, we did not come into being because there was no crisis in Europe. We came into being because there was a crisis in Europe. And without democratization and unification, that crisis was always going to spin out of control. There was no democratization, there was no unification. And therefore, it began to spin out of con control well before this mindless virus hit. Now the mindless virus hit, we have a complete uh, cessation of economic activity, more or less, at least in some countries. And the uh, hit is not going to be just a question of the tsunami that hits the whole of Europe, but primarily, it's also a question of the imbalances, that some parts of Europe, some regions, not just countries, but regions are hit a lot harder than others. And the ones that are hit are the ones that are least able to withstand the hit. So the imbalances and the centrifugal forces staring Europe apart are um, accelerating as we speak. Anyway, that was um, a brief introduction for uh, not so much us, uh, comrades of the CC, but for those who are watching. So let's now turn inwards and um, get down to the agenda. Uh, I see here um, that we begin with the reassessment of Progressive International. Uh, I think this is quite pertinent since uh, on Monday we launched uh, the um, organization of the Progressive International. The idea was launched back in uh, December, November, December 2018 in Vermont, United States. But now what we have done, what you very good, you know, excellent comrades have done, I don't take any credit of it, it was others that did, did it, all the work. Uh, we put together the organization of the PI. So we begin with the assessment of the PI. Uh, there is uh, something to be said, something, a brief, uh, a brief briefing that needs to be done regarding uh, a particular video that uh, YouTube in its infinite wisdom decided to bring down. I won't say more of this now. And finally, uh, I think that for this section of the meeting, we should have a discussion about the state of Europe uh, and the state of DiEM. Because um, this is something we, I think we should be doing every week. Every week we should be reassessing what's happening out there, what we need to do, what we're doing, what we're doing well, what, what we're not doing well. So uh, without further ado, let's begin with um, uh, the Progressive International, um, not just a celebration of the fact that it is kickstarting this week and that this is a big week, but also um, let's get down to the nitty gritty of what we must do in the next few hours, next days, in order to make this uh, a success. So who wants to take the floor? By the way, um, since I'm moderating, let me say that to make it efficient and completely fair, uh, to speak, don't raise your hand like that. Go to participants at the bottom of the page, okay? And then click on raise hand. The little blue hand will appear and it will appear in, in good order. That is you know, completely objectively. Uh, the order of speaking is going to reflect the timing how successful you were at getting your blue hand up first. So, Renata, proving that she is the most competent digitally member of the CC, raised her hand first. Very quickly. Let's try to stick to our three-minute rule. Yes, 
very quickly, uh, reactions from my, my part of the world in Latin America have been overwhelmingly positive and also from Africa and Middle East, lots of excitement, people wanting to join. And this proved that it was necessary and complementary to DiEM. It is uh, really the space for people who are not uh, Europeans to join a project larger than us and uh, completely compatible. And it makes us stronger uh, rather than a competing space. Uh, that's one of the things. And the second thing, I hope that all um, all the people watching and all the members join tomorrow, the event that we have at, five, at nine, uh, no, sorry, at 7 p.m. Uh, because it's going to be like a, a very good one, I think. And, and uh, we will have the chance to uh, exchange some ideas with the Prime Minister of Iceland, with a, a, a celebrated author uh, from uh, Kenya, uh, from uh, Fridays for Future uh, activists from Uganda. And who else? Yanis and me, yes. Okay, so um, thank you, Renata. Who wants to give us a complete briefing? Because not about everyone has followed exactly what has happened. Can I ask David, who's been on the cold face, to David? Can you give us a, a brief briefing? Sure. Of how we got to Monday's announcement? What happened on Monday? What's happening every day? What you've been up to, and what it is that we're doing tomorrow, and what we must plan for next week? Yeah. Okay. So the idea of the launch was to take this open call, this quite grandiose open call to all progressive forces around the world and to actually build the institution with the premise that what we actually lack as leftists is not the sentiment of solidarity. Many people like to feel solidarity all the time, but a real institution to channel that solidarity and making it, making it meaningful. That's what we built. Now, Monday was not even step one. We often say it was step zero of this process. Uh, but what we're doing is so far divided into three main pillars that we've discussed in the CC, but it's helpful to, to, to review. The first pillar, so three pillars with three main audiences and within the team, three different teams that are working on this inside the PI with a group of volunteers from around the world. The first is a movement pillar. That's primarily about connecting activists and organizers and internationalizing their work. That means we've discussed here in Amazon Strike within DM25, how can we internationalize you know, planetarize the, an Amazon strike so we can really match the scale of the activism to the scale of the crisis, be it climate or transnational corporations. The second piece is the policy piece, the blueprint pillar, where we're really focusing on building out the blueprint vision. So there we're gonna be building these working groups that put together very, um, not just the usual suspects, to try to build out the policy vision, not reaching total consensus, but training the progressive imagination onto the international level doing very similar work that we've been able to do and successfully do here in DM25 and put, pitting that at the, at the global level, if you will. And the third piece, <clears throat> perhaps the most novel, is our wire pillar, which is a media pillar where we're built a coalition of progressive media around the world and then we take their content, we translate into a bunch of languages and republish it in other parts of the world, facilitating a more internationalist media environment as well as securing us a kind of uh, big, big megaphone. You will have seen on Monday that my statement announced the Progressive International was published in Brazil, in, uh, the, you know, in the Philippines, in Hong Kong, in the Middle East. And that's because we built a coalition that can actually successfully take the message from inside the PI and amplify it around the world. So it's both coming in and turning out. That's a kind of prefabricated architecture. And we're going to be moving on all of those pillars in the days and weeks to come. That, that's you know, bringing on new members and trying to work with those members within the framework of the three pillars, but also around it to see about how we can more effectively support those members in the work they're doing, amplify their messages and internationalize their work. That's still phase one. Phase one we're in now is the membership drive where we do big outreach and we bring people and organizations, be they political parties, social movements, center organizations, all of the above into the Progressive International with the premise that a 21st century international is not just political parties, and it's not just trade unions, and it's not just social movements, it's all of these organizations under the same roof. That's phase one. Phase two begins with the summit. It's unclear whether we're actually going to be able to convene physically, but we will have a robust system in place as organized by the cabinets, uh, of which part uh, Stretchko and Renata form. And we will be, uh, in, in, that, in that second phase, developing a more robust governance proposal so that we can begin to act like an international. So we're going to be working with our council members as well as with our member organizations to develop a governance proposal that better elucidates how we want to act like an international. How do we want to be more effectively putting members together? 
the way the metaphor we've been using is that at this phase, the core team, the secretariat, is a bit like a like a switchboard operator. We plug people in, we connect them manually. As we move into phase two, we want to have a more decentralized process where we're actually able to have the members through what we're calling the assembly, the assembly being where all the members of the Progressive International convene, where they can more effectively communicate with each other without the heavy lifting of the 1950s operator. David, we time. have a three minute rule. How far, so, am I, how far am I over? You are at four minutes. So sorry, so, done. No, no, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the floor just for another 30 seconds to tell us about tomorrow. Tomorrow is our inaugural event that's going to be at, you know, uh, at 19 CET at 7 p.m., uh, where we're bringing together five of our wonderful council members, young climate activists in Africa and intellectuals uh, as well, uh, with sitting politicians and prime minister, the prime minister of Iceland, to have a discussion about internationalism or extinction. What is the moment that we're at and why do we need a progressive international? And that's going to be broadcast on all of our channels, on our YouTube, on our Facebook, as well as on Twitter. Well, thank you so much. That was um, that's fascinating stuff. Look, um, if anybody wants to make a point, that's fine. Uh, my suggestion, very very briefly, is because this is just such a gigantic project, uh, which also may elicit um, questions from our members, uh, concerns. Uh, are we spreading ourselves too thinly? You know, we had the European Spring before. Now we have Progressive International. How are we going to make the Progressive International more successful than the European Spring was? Um, what, what input can DMers have into the Progressive International process uh, so that it belongs? You know, my, my, so my suggestion is what you said, David, even more succinctly, maybe we can lift it from the minutes of what you said, you know, can become a little intro for DMers that can then circulate amongst DMers and we can. Uh, um, ask our members to comment, to come up with ideas, with questions, to, to have an internal consultation uh, at this early phase. But thank you so much. Who wants to, does anybody, uh, Rosanna, you want to speak to this? Because I see your blue hand. Yes, um, I collected uh, some questions regarding the PI from members. And the biggest question was if there was a all member vote on this before because um, the like the questions or the members are wondering um, why they should uh, um, take part in an all member or have an all member vote if they want to uh, candidate on their local level in a party in the name of Diem or uh, why we don't have a all member vote in a big international campaign where we work together with other parties. Um, so my question would be if there was any all member vote on the Progressive International or otherwise we shouldn't do it in the name of DM. And uh, like the second um, question or um, statement uh, of members was that um, maybe, um, maybe we should include more like gray zones not to be so um, radical in the sense of saying internationalism or extinction but maybe be more progressive in the sense to to think about more in between and um, to to think of other solutions so this was just what i heard from the members and uh yeah maybe you can say something about it um I would like, uh, look, since, since I, I just suggested the process by which we all gather views from, from members, um, I, I, I would like to propose, using my um, powers as moderator, that we don't have this discussion now, because we could talk about this now for 20 hours. And, <laughs> but let's, let's institute a process by which we gather all the, the views of different members. Um, uh, so, for instance, Rosanna, let me say that you know we inaugurated together the Sanders Institute and um, DM25. We inaugurated the Progressive International two years ago, uh, so it's not something new. We are now what we're doing is we're in the process of putting together a structure, and I think that members 
I, I personally can't believe that there is a single member who says we shouldn't be doing this. Uh, that's an, uh, one. So having an all member vote, let's have an all member vote. Should we exist as internationalists and transnationalists? I, I don't think this is very interesting. What is interesting is how do we do it? And all the sort of gray zones and so on. There are many pitfalls, many potential problems. So why don't we just use this, you know, your intervention and the fact that you mentioned that there are questions by members, and I'm sure there are, and it's completely legitimate. Uh, and, you know, have a process by which we can have all member votes on interesting questions, on specific questions, on how do we do this, how do we do that, and, and so on. But I don't think this is the time for today. Today, we can move on, we can open the, up the process of consultation. Um, I would like to keep this, you know, under wraps, unless there is something really pressing to say that we that can't wait. Um, so, uh, who is this QRJ person? That's that's Sretsko. Okay, so it's, it's Sretsko, just, quickly, and then Renata, and then we move on. Just quickly, because it also opens uh, the next topic of the agenda, which is <coughs> YouTube taking down the Noam Chomsky video. So just a direct reply to Rosanna and someone who asked us, uh, why is it internationalism or extinction? Well, it is because that's uh, the title of a book by Noam Chomsky, and this is a slogan which Noam Chomsky found, invented, and we like it a lot. Uh, Noam Chomsky is advisory panel member of DiEM, council member of Progressive International, and we think, most of us on board, uh, that it's a good, good slogan. So, if you have others, please send it to us. Okay, um, thank you, Tsvetsko. Now we go to Renata and then to Simona, and yeah. I'll shut that down there. It's, Renata, it's, quick. it's connected to the same to the slogan and, and what moderation. I mean, it is a fact, it's a fact uh, recognized by science that if we do not take a, a radical global approach on the solutions that are needed, we are going to be extinct. So it's not only the, st the statement of Noam Chomsky, okay. but I, I shall intervene as the moderator to say this is not a debate to have now. Yeah. Um, just, just we need, we need, we, we need, we need to discuss this. I personally like the slogan, but I'm, I, if others have better slogans to suggest, then we should uh, have this uh, the, this process. They, look, the, the PI is going to be a very long term thing, so you know we're going to have various slogans. So let let's move on. Simona, you wanted to intervene on this before I move to the next subject. Oh, uh, just um, my some members asked me uh, one simple question. Uh, you can join as an individual, the Progressive International, and uh, uh, if you are a DM member, you are already uh, join. You are already a member of the Progressive International, or not? Uh, they are not so clear about uh, individual uh, joinings. And David, do you have a quick answer to that. They should join. It's costless. It takes five minutes. They should join and become a member of Progressive International, or they email no, us and say, question, "No, no, 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 no." The question is very technical. Are is a DMR automatically a member of the PI? No, only if they want to be. Uh, only if they want to be. They, we couldn't do that. Then we would have had to, to have an, an all member vote. You see, uh, so the, the PI is something that we are contributing to. We play a leading role, but it doesn't belong to us. It's not a DM organization, right? In the same way that the European Spring. Um, but it's quite different to the European, so that was an electoral thing. Anyway, Commerce, what do you say? Should we move on? Because this, you know, we're just making some very early steps. Um, it's a fascinating project, and there needs to be a lot of discussion of the nitty gritty steps after that. Uh, okay, so um, let's move on now to the to the second item of the agenda. I think that Serge already let the cat out of the bag. I believe from what I heard, that um, the, the, the most popular uh, DMTV show uh, with Noam Chomsky that has been watched by more than 1.1 million people was uh, taken down by YouTube. Uh, I don't know why it was taken down. Uh, and uh, David uh, took some steps, uh, appealed that. In the end, uh, the video was restored. But there are interesting political um, aspects to this uh, taking down of all videos, a Noam Chomsky video. Um, so uh, who wants to speak to this? Uh, I think uh, Renata is the best to speak about it and David, the two of them, because they've been in contact okay. with YouTube. So, so I leave the floor to uh, them. I will, I will give the, the floor to David. 
and then to Renata, and then anybody wants, who wants to take the floor. But again, briefly, we have a lot of work to do. Sure, I'll be, I'll be very quick. Thanks, Yanis. Um, so basically, that's exactly what happened. We, we have a video with 1.2 million views by now, this interview with Chomsky. Uh, YouTube randomly took the video down without justification. Uh, then what I did was I just simply appealed uh, to YouTube. They declined the first appeal, and then in the second appeal, they managed to restore the video. But that's, that's as far as I know from my, uh, from my side, they didn't really explain the reasons. But I know that Renata then was also in touch with, with some people, uh, and I will let her speak about that. Uh, and what, yeah. Quickly, I sent a very strong letter, legal letter, to Google lawyers uh, explaining what had happened and giving them 24, hour, 24 hours to fix it. Otherwise, we will escalate it and that we demanded to know the reasons, the exact reasons of why it was removed. And of course, the response from the lawyer was, it's a glitch in the system. And we are sorry, but it's restored now. And that is completely unacceptable because, of course, we got this quickly solved because we have connections, we are a movement, we escalated that, but that's not what happens to ordinary, to any uh, European or global citizen uh, trying to uh, push speech, speech out. So I got advice from um, some organizations dealing with digital rights, and they say that it's a widespread problem. So not for this meeting, but for a future meeting, I think I will be very keen on propose a campaign, a DM-wide campaign on uh, takedowns of content and of co political content and on demanding a better due process on, on this because it's done by AI and some words activate even if, if uh, uh, Chomsky mentioned COVID or nuclear or some specific words trigger this automated uh, censorship that has been like a take is, is, is a, the corporate takeover of uh, censorship and it's a very serious issue for democracy. So that's what happened. We have all on record, on the record, and, and uh, we have the experts on board uh, willing to support uh, some action on this and I, I'm ready for the fight. Well, thank you, Renata. Um... I think that um, Felix, you wanted to speak as well. Yeah, just just quickly because uh, we talked about it as well. What are our next steps uh, besides this? Uh, what we undertaken is to download all the DMTV YouTube videos, and we are now discussing how to see to upload it everything either on the DM website uh, or somewhere else, uh, because it's ob obviously not just a copyright issue or something like that. So we need to protect the material which we have. Because DMTV, I think it was watched by 2 million people by now, 2 million in more than one and a half months. Uh, so we need to download, we already did everything. And yeah, that's it. Well, this is proof that um, technology is never politically neutral. I remember the, when the first version of Word that I came across, and actually Word Perfect even before, actually Word, Word, Bill Gates is Word. Um, recognized um, Milton Friedman, it recognized uh, Friedrich von Hayek, it recognized Hitler, it recognized Mussolini, but it did not recognize Karl Marx, it did not recognize John Maynard Keynes. <laughs> Just a little a brief aside. Um, okay, now let's move on to uh, the third um, uh, item on the agenda. Uh, a discussion about the state of Europe and uh, the state of DiEM. Can I make a, a three minute introduction? And I have already started timing myself, as you can see, uh, in order not to uh, abuse my moderating power. Uh, look, um, you can see that um, the forces of disintegration in Europe are gathering pace. The recent decision by the Constitutional Court in Germany, I'm not going to pass judgment on it. Um, I think that it was not as absurd as some especially people, people on, in the South or in the left or the center left or social democratic left make it out to be. I think that what it signals is that the intergovernmental uh, confederate model of the European Union is now buckling under the pressure of 10 years of austerity, 10 years of stagnation, 10 years of socialism for the bankers and um, you know, unfettered market competition for the majority. And now the, co the collapse uh, of economic activity that uh, the, the coronavirus crisis has brought in. We can see that this subsidiarity, the uh, separation of the national sovereign domain from the 
monetary domain, which is the ECBs, from the legal um, European level, which is where the European Court of um, Justice uh, pronounces, from where the national courts pronounce. This separation has created a monster. And this monster is now no longer fit for purpose. And this is precisely what Diem was set up to highlight. Um, the difference between us and federalists of a liberal ilk, uh, of a bourgeois ilk, is that we don't believe that, it, that th things can be fixed through um, a consensual process uh, that goes along the lines of um, the meetings in the Eurogroup and the European Union Council and so on. Unless we clash with the institutions, unless we are truly radical, we can never save this Europe. Uh, and to conclude, talking about Diem, uh, we must be not only the movement that brings change to Europe, but we must demonstrate to Europe uh, what it means to be transnational. The fact that we are not federal, and this is a comment because I've seen various discussions uh, in the forum and elsewhere amongst DMS, by especially some of the newer members, that uh, they have a federal structure in mind or a confederal structure in mind, whereby you know the national collective is uh, the federation of the DSCs, and the CC is the federation of the national collectives. That is not how DM is or ought to be. We need to lead by example of what it means to be transnational, what it means to have horizontality, members that can organize with DSCs, with NCs and so on. But in the end, we decide together through all member votes. I was five minutes off my limit, I'm sorry. Who wants to speak? No blue hands. Come on, there, Jordi. Ha. Thanks, comrade. Take the floor. Hello. Uh, thank you, Yanis. No, I, I just wanted to, to uh, uh, first of all, congratulate, I didn't say before, the e, e, International Progressive. I think it's been a great impact, especially in Spain, from many different uh, origins, from everywhere. So, and I think it has a lot in to do about the actual situation. I think it's not only the, its impact, it comes from because it's the right moment. It's the moment we need a, a movement like that or a transnational movement, as you were saying before. And I, I'm going to give an example. I think it's uh, what worries me at this moment. What we're doing in Spain, in Italy, in, in other countries in Europe is to face the crisis from a national point of view. Okay, So uh, uh, we are taking similar measures about uh, to give loans to companies, to give uh, subsidies to people that are having a, a bad moment and so on. These are good measures, but we are not discussing the main measure is how, we, how do we finance that? Uh, what do we do? Since we are taking the national point of view, we say, okay, the only way is since we don't have a central bank because of the Euro, uh, what we're doing eh, is uh, growing our debt. So we're going to go to a, a similar situation that we had in 2008. And the end of the situation was more crisis for the pe people that had less, uh, 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 less money uh, for unemployed and so on. And especially also for uh, small and, and medium-sized companies. So from I think that the 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 need of the EB and of the uh, international progressive is denouncing that we cannot affront this crisis just from a national point of view, or we start uh, issuing more money, and I think it's not a uh, uh, we are not worried about inflation at this moment. All the country, so otherwise, what we're doing from any every of our countries is just going the uh, making the problem worse that's one one thing the other thing is that what we're doing is trying to subsidize the traditional sectors that uh don't help uh, uh um an equality situation from from people like tourism for example in spain uh, this is one of the main sectors but this also 
a sector that gives inequality to people. It's a very bad paid sector. Uh, and these big companies that uh, uh, rule on these sectors, on tourism, for example, on, on housing and all, all these kind of sectors are demanding more and more money from the states. So we have from one side, the state, uh, the, 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 the national state giving more debt in order to uh, from this situation and on the other most of this money is going to the big companies that are not going to be able to go out from the crisis with the same situation that they were in, in the past tourism is cannot be the future because this crisis is going to last more uh, and 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 we cannot think about tourism as we thought in the past i think there was uh, uh, it's a, a a very good article uh, in the International Progressive webpage about, uh, of Galbraith talking about that. I think it's uh, uh, sensational, this, this article, and talks about that. I mean, let's forget about the traditional sectors. They are just going to get more and more money, public money, in order to uh, uh, help them, but they're not going to be able to go out from the crisis in the same situation as they were. Well, thank you so much, Jordi. Of course, you know that Galbraith is with us in body and in mind. Um, we can call upon his services at any moment in time. Uh, he is a deemer um, through and through. Uh, okay, now I'm going to give the floor to Eric, who, as uh, the host officially, cannot raise his blue little hand, and then to Sisi. Thank you for making that exception, despite the lack of blue hands, Jens. Um, <clears throat> so very briefly on the federalization point, because it's something very close to my heart. And the very lack of federalization in DiEM was one of the most attractive qualities to the movement for me when I joined back in 2016, when we started this off. Um, it is imperative that the movement that tries to prove that there can be democracy in Europe can also prove that there is such a thing as a, Euro as a European demos, as a European people, that we can together make decisions regardless of where we live, regardless of where we vote, regardless of where we're from. And to prove that, being united at the European level, coming up, my cat also feels very strongly about that, um, uh, being united at the European level, coming up with a European program, a European ambition that is then applied to the national level is incredibly important. And it's also important, principles and ideology aside, structurally, strategically, because Brussels has been designed to be an intergovernmental arena. It is where governments come to play intergovernmental games. If every variation, national variation of DiEM25 is based on a national particular shape, and form and program, then when you join Brussels, you will de facto end up playing the Brussels game. If we do not come to Brussels from the member states with exactly the same program, being uh, representing exactly the same project with exactly the same ideas, when you reach Brussels, Brussels divides you because it's designed to divide. So it is not just a matter of principle, it's also a matter of strategy. In order to enter Brussels and come to Brussels and not be divided by the inherent structural divisions of Brussels, one needs to come here without an inkling of a division between Spain, France, Greece, Portugal. We all come to Brussels as Europeans, first and foremost. And um, that's just the one thing I wanted to say on this point of federalism. I think it's important. And you've got a very good score in terms of time. Oh, good. I can sing for 40 seconds if you like. Just okay. Film. So, um, Sisi, and then we shall, I'll, I shall close the conversation with Rosanna. Yeah, Sisi, Rosanna, close. Okay. Um, in my opinion, the epidemic shows uh, the problems of the system and the systemic forces in Europe. Uh, it shows that and privatization of public goods has basically turned into a biopolitics against the European people. Um, at the same time, it shows the importance of restoring these basic goods for, for the good of and the well-being of the European people. 
So, uh, in my opinion, it offers uh, the privileged terrain for uh, the unification of the whole Europe. And by Europe, I do not mean the EU only, let's make this clear again and again, on a common basis, a basis for, for the starting of a struggle. What is the struggle? The struggle is post-capitalism. This, uh, uh, for example, there is this uh, piece by Yanis, uh, DM's vision of Europe for the post-epidemic era, which has been posted in the forum, that shows very clearly, in my opinion, okay, uh, how uh, we have to move from now on. Um, in other words, what I'm saying is, it's not time for introversion. It's not time for um, um, scholastic discussions about procedures and about formalities. And now it's high time that the whole of our membership would launch a battle against all these problems that were raised by the systemic and I, by systemic, I mean capitalist, to be clear, lack or inability to cope with problems that unify all of us. Thank you. Did I, did I do all right in terms of time, Yanni? <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> I've got Four one seconds. minute left. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can, okay. you can so also think now. Procedures are fine. The only way for for politics is common fight, actual common fights yeah, on right. a programmatic basis. Thank you. Rosanna. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to answer to Eric uh, regarding his um, definition of um, federalism, because as you know, I'm part of the European Federalist young European federalist movement. <laughs> and, and so um, I really don't understand your criticism towards federalism because federalism is not the same everywhere. If you want to discuss the de definition of federalism, it's, it's quite hard and you have to read a lot of books and it's uh, really um, a big issue, but um, you shouldn't like, say that it's not uh, the best uh, system to uh, work transnational because I experienced um, I experienced that it is possible and um, if you are um, like fr from the perspective of the European level we are only seen as a NGO in, based in Brussels with uh, two with, with twelve people and some other uh, paid uh, ex officios. And if we don't include all those voices uh, from our movement, and if we tell them that they are only a group of friends, the DSC, and not included in our decision making process. And if we don't uh, build up a proper, uh, democratic, and transparent um, process of um, articulating our opinions, then like the European level will never, um, we, we will never influence the European poli politics or the European policy if we, if we don't have this kind of federalist structure. That's my opinion. Well, thank you, Rosanna. Um, I, I, I'll just a very brief comment. Uh, DiEM is an anti-federal, non-federal movement in terms of its structure. We are a transnational movement. So anybody who wants to turn DiEM into a federal movement better start a very long campaign, uh, which um, I trust and I promise they're going to lose. Because the whole point of DiEM was to be in it, not as Greeks or Germans, um, unlike a federation, but to be in it as Europeans. That's my personal view. Anybody who thinks that DiEM is just an NGO with some ex officios, um, I welcome the, their democratic right to self-ridicule. Um, so um, I said that we, I, would, I would close the conversation, but we have Judith and Simona. Um, let's try to keep this tight, Judith and Simona. Um, but you know, I'm not going to deny you the floor. No more blue hands until we move to the next topic, though. Uh, Judith. 
Yeah, um, I wanted to uh, to respond to uh, what uh, Eric uh, had said, and for me this is also terribly important uh, that uh, DM is transnational and not uh, federal. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we have uh, right in this time uh, of uh, coronavirus and even before, even when DM was uh, founded in 2016, even before, uh, is uh, this difference in perception uh, in the general population between what is urgent right now. Um, I think when I look at uh, German progressive circles, a lot of them are still discussing, should we have a European Republic? Um, if you ask uh, someone in, uh, in Croatia, in, in Greece, uh, so that is, that's not even like the top 20 of their current worries. And I think that as DiEM, uh, we need to ensure that uh, Europe uh, also hears about the real uh, urgent matters, uh, the things that uh, really con uh, concern a majority of uh, Europeans uh, right now, so that we can have a, d a discussion about how to solve these actual problems that actual people are facing, and not keep discussing about, uh, you know, in, in internal democracy and uh, uh, how would we like the European Union to look in 2050? I don't know. Uh, we have a real problem which is going to dissolve the European Union uh, in the near future. Let's work on it. Thank you, Judith, and thank you for keeping to the time. Um, now we have Simona, and then we move on. Simona. Uh, yeah. Rosanna, uh, there is a, a law in uh, logics. When you put something in the premises, you'll find it in the consequences. You cannot have uh, an international movement starting from uh, uh, national and local uh, um, points. Uh, we we need to be we must be a democratic movement, and I strongly disagree with uh, um, CC and Judith on this. Uh, it's essential to uh, set procedures to allow members uh, to uh, organize transnationally. Um, when uh, there is an episode uh, in. Uh, um, uh, the imitation game, uh, when uh, a general says uh, to, uh, to the logical, um, I know how to win a war because I won the first uh, world, uh, world war. Um, when uh, you are in a crisis, you tend to uh, use the oldest uh, uh, forms to uh, address it, but uh, there they are not the the right form. So um, making a trans a true transnational movement is a a, a challenge, a, a hard challenge. That's why we say the uh, the receipt will come, but we need a receipt. We need structures to uh, allow members to uh, empower themselves and to self organize. Uh, we need to make members feel uh, uh, they can self-organize and not uh, at a federal, uh, in a federal way. Uh, the federal way is the uh, first um, world uh, war. It's the old way uh, to, to be democratic. You, uh, you had to stay in a place and discuss with your comrade in your town, in, in your nation. That's not the aim. We, ne we need to uh, self-organized at a transnational way uh, level, uh, not as nations or as uh, uh, regions or as municipalities. Thank you, Simona. Two minutes, 23 seconds, very well within your limits. Um, look, comrades, this is um, a, a very good discussion and it's also good to have this. Sorry, I, I, I want to respond to Simona. No, no. You don't have no, to. because I'm closing it up. I'm, I'm closing. And I don't like I'm, this. I'm closing. I mean, she presented me as a person who is not for democratic procedures. No, no, I but said but something more complex. I'm sorry. Please, I'm sorry. Please, please, please. I said if that within the fight through bondage and bonding of people happens, not in paper. Okay, am I clear now, Simona? Thank there is no insinuation by any member of DM regarding any other member of DiEM, that there is any kind of personal democratic deficit. Uh, let's make it absolutely clear, anybody who makes that allegation about anybody 
is, is simply just going to feel bad about themselves. And nobody has. So um, look, let's, let, let's take one second to appreciate the enormity of DM's task. We are trying something that has never been tried before. You know, transnational politics has never been tried by anyone. We are the first movement ever to try it. So of course we're going to have disagreements and of course we're going, there are going to be moments of, of tension, but we are moving together, united, in the direction of something that is necessary, not just for Europe, but as we now see with the Progressive International for the World. Allow me to finish this discussion by giving the floor, not to somebody who is physically with us, but something that has come to us via the live stream, the YouTube chat, uh, some fellow, I don't know, woman, man, says, I'm watching from Lebanon. I'm fully supporting DM25. I hope we can figure how to get more Lebanese informed about your movement. I think that tells us what we need to know at this stage. Uh, now, um, to our friends on YouTube, let me thank you for um, having spent almost an hour with us. Uh, we are now going to switch off the, the live stream and we will continue with nitty gritty technical stuff that wouldn't be, be of much interest and in any case require uh, a more technical and bureaucratic decision making process. So in the interest of full transparency, we shall continue but talking about things that concern processes, internal dynamics, internal procedures that do not concern anyone else except the coordinating collective that has been elected to do this, <laughs> to bear this burden. So, YouTubers, comrades, friends, foes who have been watching, watching, thank you so much. See you next week, same time, same place.